Okay, forgive the break in the video, I ran out of memory so I had to chuck a new SD card into the phone to keep this video going. The next part of the process is to plumb things up. So you would take your 220mm fuel line, you would then take your 50mm fuel line, you would lubricate part of the 50mm fuel line, 3mm internal diameter, 5mm external diameter, you would lubricate that with two-stroke oil. You would then take your 220 millimeter long fuel line, that's five millimeters internal diameter, approximately eight millimeters external. You would slide the 50 millimeter long fuel line inside the larger fuel line. Of course, once that's got two-stroke oil on it, that will slide inside. You will slide it inside approximately 20 millimeters and then put a clamp on there or whatever type clip and that will prevent this smaller diameter fuel line coming out. I've never had any issues and it won't leak. You will then take this assembly and you will have to plumb it up to the carburetor. So you've got to get fuel to the carburetor. Now with a diaphragm carburetor you'll find that there are two ports. You have this port here and you have it in this type of carburetor, or this style, you have another port here. With this particular type of carburetor that you would get from rock solid engines, the one that sits horizontally, so if you can imagine there's the engine, the one that sits more horizontally is the fuel intake, which will be this one here. The one that is underneath, so you can see there's the there's the bottom of the cylinder, and in this case, you can see this one here underneath. The one at the lowest point, or particularly um, identifiable by this large, I can get it to focus for you, by this large star screw, that is your fuel intake. Oh, sorry, my apologies. That is your crankcase pulse port. So the, the pulse that's coming off the crankcase that I will show you in the next step has to go to this point here. This one that runs more horizontal is your fuel intake. And get it to focus. Okay. Okay. So this one is your get it to focus for you. That is your fuel intake. And the one that's more upside down and it has the star screw on it. That is for your crankcase pulse, which operates the diaphragm inside this carburetor. So now we'll mock things up as I was describing before, because this is just a mock-up situation. You would then take your carburetor, you would slide your nipple on the, the fuel line onto the nipple, as you can see, and Okay, so that's how it would it would sit on the motorized bicycle, like so. Fuel in, and the next part of the process is to ensure that you can get a crankcase pulse. So you need the 130 millimeter long line. It then attaches. It attaches onto this point here. Okay. And there's your finished assembly. Fuel. Crankcase pulse. Now, if I can find an engine. Okay, yes, I can. Okay. Here is one that I have prepared earlier. Now, this is an engine that needs a rebuild. But the important thing is for you to see. Maybe you can, and maybe you can't see it on the video, but we'll see how we go. And 
nearly had it before. You'll have to bear with me on this. Okay, yes you can just see it. You can see this point here. Inside the transfer port, you can see just there is a hole. So looking at, from the to looking at it from the top, you have the transfer port area in the case. Get to the focus. And just simply drill through, drill through this material here. Okay. Here you can see the nipple. Let's focus. You can see the nipple that comes out. That nipple is hollow. And that allows a pulse, or a pressure pulse, to come through the crankcase. So when the piston is descending, I'm going to move this, move this for you. It's a bit tricky, so forgive the shakes. So when the piston is descending, it's building pressure in the crankcase. As, crash, as pressure builds in the crankcase, it tries to force air out of the crankcase. So in this case here, the only way that air can potentially escape, or a pressure pulse can escape, is through that hole in here. And you'll find that there's a shuttling of pressure that's happening in the pulse line, and that shuttling of pressure goes to, comes from the crankcase, to focus for you. Comes from the crankcase, it goes down this line here and into the diaphragm of the diaphragm carburetor in there. And that pulse moves the diaphragm backwards and forwards and allows fuel to move through the carburetor. Move this out of the way. Okay. So there's your basic assembly and a brief tutorial on the assembly of the reed valve intake system with a Walro style carburetor or a diaphragm type carburetor. Fairly basic, not a lot involved, but it has many benefits. And as described in a previous video, one of the main benefits, apart from cleanliness, because these type of carburetors don't leak, they just simply do not leak fuel. They are effectively mess free. But the big, big benefit with this type of carburetor, I'm going to focus for you again, is you have your high and low adjustment needles. So it's very easy to adjust your idle fuel mixture and your maximum or wide open throttle fuel mixture with these two mixture screws. Same as on a chainsaw. And as you can see now, if I turn it up on its end, you can see the velocity stack that you've created. So you've got all of this air moving at speed, generating velocity. That's it. Completed unit, and it's job done. Hope that's been a benefit. See you next time.